News at 6 on WUTR. Last week, our journey through the past took us into the hidden history of the city of Utica. Tonight, Joe Kelly takes us just another step further. The second charter of the village of Utica took effect April 9, 1805. It set up a better structure for the village, including the ability to levy a tax on its residents. The revenue was to be used for public buildings, fire protection, and needed improvements in the village. Tax revenue was not to exceed $1,000 a year. Elections would be held in May, and five trustees would be selected. And if one of those elected trustees refused to serve, he would be fined $25. The trustees had various responsibilities, including serving as fire wardens and the appointing of 25 firemen. The fire crews were made up of prominent lawyers and businessmen. That's because firemen held a position of importance and responsibility. One benefit to being a fireman was that they were exempt from military service. Believe it or not, the trustees would even set the price of bread. And the trustees also appointed a village treasurer and tax collector. Both were paid positions. Under this second charter, Utica continued to grow. A third charter was enacted in April 1817. Under this provision, the village of Utica was split off from the town of Whitestown. The new charter also expanded services provided to residents, including helping the poor and other quality of life regulations. The village population was expanding to the west and the south into Corn Hill. That growth was happening at an incredible pace. Between 1825 and 1830, the population of Utica went from 5,040 to 8,335 residents. That in just five years. The next step was for Utica to become a city, and that happened by an act of the state legislature on February 13, 1832. This meant that the city of Utica would have a mayor and a full legislative body to oversee the city's government. At first, the mayor was appointed by the Common Council, and Joseph Kirkland was the first appointed mayor of Utica. By 1840, the city's charter was changed to allow for the public election of mayor. The first man voted into office was John Devereux. He had been appointed mayor the year before. Then in 1837, a devastating fire proved to be a blessing in disguise. The fire leveled a large portion of the structures on Genesee Street and Main Street. Those destroyed buildings were then replaced with sturdier and more attractive brick buildings that were less susceptible to fire. By the city's 46th birthday, its population had grown to 35,000 Uticans. That growth pattern would continue well into the 20th century. Produced with the cooperation of the United County History Center, I'm Joe Kelly, and this is Hidden History.